Roid rage. Is it real? Are you locked down? Or is this just an asshole on steroids? Thank you so much as part of my entertainment series. As we get through this, the whole world together, we're quarantined, we're at home. So many calls have come in from my existing patients and even new consultations that I'm irritated, doctor. My personality's irritated. I'm wondering if it's the hormones. Let's go. I've written articles on this in the past, but this is my first review video. And I thank everyone so much as we are in this together. There's no conclusive studies on roid rage. I've looked at a lot of studies over the years and I've analyzed these in detail. So what do we have? What's going on? It's too subjective. Roid rage is absolutely, there's so many confounding factors. You can't just do a simple study on it. Although hats off to the guys and the healthcare experts that have tried to analyze this. They've brought up some excellent points and I'm gonna bring them out today. What the studies have looked at. They've looked at men, first of all, these are all men, and they're on testosterone ranging through anabolic steroids. That itself is a huge spectrum and part of the problem as far as nailing down and outcomes. That's a big issue. What do they look at? Behavioral issues. What is that? They're looking at violent criminal behavior, first of all, versus what we're gonna talk about in the end, which I have tons of experience as an anabolic expert in the world for over a decade, guys that are just irritated and their quality of life is not right. Criminal behavior first, men with existing psychological issues, including mood disorders, real depression, bipolar depression, anxiety conditions, including general anxiety disorders, and a range of personality disorders, and then these guys are incarcerated or they're out in the community. All over the world, I've looked at studies done very well, very well done studies. It's interesting that they looked at men and the ages of men, the types of steroids, but not in detail, just steroids versus testosterone. Definitely no breakdown versus Tren or other polypharmacies in detail, apart from recreational drugs, which we'll talk about. Big contribution issues going on here. And TRT. So you have to tease these out. Common sense tells you that there's so much difference with TRT versus polypharmacy steroid use. They looked at men and their inherent aggressive nature. They looked at competitiveness in men. They looked at social economic factors all over the world. Now, they definitely brought out, at least in the current studies in the last five years, that these are not competitive athletes. The number one steroid user today and the men that I work with are non-athletes using these drugs to look better, theoretically to feel better, and this is where it starts. Bodybuilding and for that general fitness high. People use steroids. This is the big news today, and there are tens and hundreds of millions and more every day. And that's why I'm the anabolic doc, and that's why I'm on the job. The studies looked at relationship to so many issues, so many issues manifested in their aggressive behavior. But in the end, they could not generate an establishment for causation. And in the studies, they found so many confounding factors, both statistically and non-statistically. It's incredible when you look at these behavioral health studies. I'm an internal medicine expert, so you guys know that I work from the chin down, internal organs. From the chin up, that's a whole other frontier. Very humbling. The other contributing factors that led to confounding statistical analysis. They compared steroid users to non-steroid users. They looked at 
issues apart from underlying mood disorders and psychiatric disorders that I talked about just a few minutes ago. They looked at drugs, obviously drugs, alcohol, and mainly amphetamines, cocaine, and methamphetamine all over the world and how this led to aggressive behavior. Remember, these studies are looking at men that are incarcerated or they've been picked up for aggressive behavior upon someone else. What was amazing in these studies, in my take home, was that in most of these men, if not every man that commits aggressive acts of criminal behavior, is that he has a past history of emotional or physical abuse. Now this was seen in non-steroid users and of course in steroid users, but how important is that? With this incredible history, there's not enough attention to men's health. And this is exactly why I'm doing this and looking at men that are using steroids in the end and all men so we can have a better well-being and better care for men. Of course, starts off with young men, emotional abuse, physical abuse. This has to be taken into consideration. Apart from violent behavior, let's discuss the more common and real aspects of what happens when men use steroids leading to roid rage. As I've been working with thousands and thousands of men over many, many years, in my expert opinion, I'm gonna go into now anecdotes and what I've seen across the board. And this is just my take. We've never had any studies, conclusive studies on this, and we need to do it. Now, first piece is we're gonna break down men looking at TRT, men that are just on testosterone replacement. Now, most men in my clinic, obviously, are on TRT because they've shut themselves down naturally, and we don't discriminate on men for that. They've used steroids, and now they need to be on TRT for life. Now, we take those men on a spectrum of men that are actively using anabolic steroids. Now, we all know that anabolic steroids are, are used to affect muscle and performance. Okay, everyone is gonna agree that the steroids enter the brain and they have incredible effects in the central nervous system. What do you see and what do you look forward to? Increase in libido, increase of well-being, that increase in energy everyone talks about. The effect on the mood is absolutely incredible and the reason why it's so subjective and so difficult to grab and nail down in any study. From confidence, a man is confident and he's aggressive and he's a great salesman, he makes more money. I have men, and I know I tell you guys this, so many that come in and, and I take care of you with their histories and physicals and now we're doing everything digitally. I say, men have told me that, doc, ask me why I do steroids and why I've on testosterone now. Okay, why are you doing testosterone, sir? Why do you do steroids? I do it to make more money, doctor. I don't do it to bench press 400 pounds or even 200 pounds. I do it to make more money and to have a great sex life. Can you imagine this? That is not happening in the skeletal muscle. That's happening in the brain, affecting libido, well-being, energy, and mood. Confidence can vary, be a slippery slope and move into aggressive behavior and being bombastic and having personality problems. Everyone knows this. The CNS, what's being affected? Serotonin, dopamine, norepinephrine, and those GABA chemical synapses. Anabolic steroids have such an incredible variable effect on every man, common sense, and across the board in the spectrum of testosterone esters, the doses, the actual steroids that are used, Anavar, D-Ball, Equipoise, Mastron, Primo, not to mention so many others. Now, Trenbolin, everyone's gonna agree with me. Men get so, they get so defensive. Roid rage, doc, really isn't true. You know, it's just an asshole. It's an asshole on steroids. Okay, sir, I can understand that. But no man, no bodybuilder, no man that's used Tren is ever gonna disagree. You know, Doc, it all stands apart from Tren, woo! I was horrible to my friends. I had such a short fuse. I was that asshole on steroids. So Tren, what is it with Tren? That's a steroid halo test. SARMs, clenbuterol, DMP, even human growth hormone. 
All these things have effects in your central nervous system. They're all going to be variable based on your fingerprint, who you are, where you are. Look at us now. We're sitting home. I'm irritated sitting home alone all the time. Thank God I'm happy and I love the people I'm with, but there are people living home alone with people they love, but they're short fuse. Living in small apartments, we got to get through this. Some of the examples that I love to give to you, and these are not one isolated example, and I'm changing things around so I don't want a patient I've had now or in the past to feel like I'm talking about him. I've seen men get ragefully jealous on testosterone. Now, these are just testosterone. These examples are just on testosterone. Acts of rageful jealousy, some of them domestic violence. I've seen it. I've been doing this for a long time, guys. One man almost threw his wife and a man she was talking to just at an upscale resort somewhere through a plate glass window, taken out by the police and called me after hours. Well, that man, we had to uh, make sure we weaned him off testosterone and he had to get psychological care. Another man, aggressive behavior in court. It's a lawyer. He's an aggressive lawyer. You want an aggressive litigator? Who doesn't? Well, he got too aggressive for his own sake and things didn't go well. And there, was, there was no violations, but he just didn't like and didn't feel comfortable even on just testosterone gel for what it did to him. Oh, he liked the changes in his brain. He liked the energy and he liked the libido, but this was a game changer and this one man could not do testosterone because of this. More men I've seen, the most common manifestation of how TRT can affect a man's central nervous system and lead to worse than anxiety and depression is a man that has underlying mood disorder, even just mild depression or anxiety, general anxiety disorder, that they take testosterone and they end up having panic attacks and just worse anxiety and crying, bouts of crying and just, just generalized suffering. And they can't even take testosterone. I've tried gel, micro doses, HCG, and Clomid and aromatase inhibitors, which I will warn against those with men that have mood disorder, if you could find a regimen, usually it's microdosing. Usually it's microdosing, and sometimes you have to work with other uh, experts and psychological experts, and there has to be other mood stabilizing agents and antidepressants on board, and then you find that balance. Please, that's just why testosterone is so inherently important to have a caregiver who's an expert to work openly with men and other medical experts, especially psychiatrists and psychologists. I have so many men that we have to find that incredible intimate balance with the dose of testosterone with his other medical issues, especially underlying mood disorders. And sometimes you have to balance it with other medicines and therapies. I can't tell you how important that is. But most men feel great on testosterone, absolutely. They get that buzz, they get that libido, that confidence, not to mention it's going to be great for the body, but it's done for the brain. What other contributing factors are there? Again, in summary, mood disorders, that's depression and bipolar depression, and there's a spectrum on that. There's anxiety disorders, there's personality traits. People have different personality traits. I think that is where you do have the saying, Doc, it's an asshole, and now it's an asshole on steroids. Correct. That's a personality trait. And then you have co-use drugs, amphetamines, and alcohol. Other medical issues, you're not going to feel good, and you're going to be irritable and depressed if you have heart disease or kidney disease. You see, it's all together. And then, of course, other steroids, other anabolic antigenic agents, especially TREN and heavy drug uses over time periods with multiple steroids, other drugs, and of course, even on TRT, as I mentioned, even with men, you use such small doses, you try to balance, be careful with the aromatase inhibitors and Clomid, but you use these drugs and it works. You have to balance each man, as I say, under the wing so carefully, so carefully. 
Each man will need to be seen by an expert testosteronologist that needs to be with a detailed history and physical exam and then monitored closely. In conclusion, in these times, we have to get through this. I think we're about halfway home. I think there'll be another month or so and we're gonna peek our heads out and I think groups of people are gonna be able to venture back out safely. I think the antibody testing is gonna be very relevant to see who's had infection with corona versus who hasn't and we have to listen to our expert healthcare epidemiological and public health experts and when we come out of this it is going to be a great party i really hope this was entertaining and more than entertaining i really hope this helps some of you guys thank you so much